Are we filming? Yes, we are. So welcome. Welcome to another of my videos. Thank you for being here and watching. I really appreciate that a lot. Um, this is something that uh, has uh, has become quite a big part of my life. So thank you. Thank you for engaging with this process with me. Um, today, I want to I want to share with you an experiment that I have been conducting for the last month or thereabouts. Uh, it's going to be fairly obvious what I'm doing in in the next uh, few seconds, but I do want to expand on on the experimental process and the possible advantages of working with this uh, this methodology, if you like. Um, we uh, we're all by virtue of the fact you're you're watching now, uh, you are fans of or interested in ring binders, um, file effects or other binders out there. Um, but the essential the essential thing with ring binders is that you can open the rings, insert your punched paper with punched holes and then close the rings and then it it is uh, it is what it is, isn't it? It's fairly secure, especially with uh, six rings, typically with a file of axe, um, rather than two rings. Or if you're using an A4 size, uh, typically those binders um, in the commercial world, if you like, um, uh, government departments, for instance, uh, t they tend to be four ring instead of two ring. Uh, for for reasons of paper staying within the binder, but I've been experimenting with a different process. So let me let me show you what I'm doing. So this is a this is a file of facts. In fact, this is a Lafax, um, and it's got exactly one hundred sheets of paper in here, blank paper. Um, it could be more, there could be less, but I, I I conducted this experiment using 100 sheets of paper. And crucially, uh, for the purposes of this experiment, I used 60, 60 GSM paper, 60 grams per square metre. So relatively thin, uh, 80 grams is more common, uh, 100 gram, 90 or 100 is even thicker, and that's more suitable for people that like to use uh, fountain pens without the associated problems of writing with a fountain pen on the thinner paper. But for this experiment, I chose 60 GSM paper, and that's important because I wanted to test something. Let me show you this. Okay, so there we go. Shall we do another one? Just to, uh, just for the purposes of uh, the video. So you can see what I've done, can't you? Um, this isn't a new idea. Other people have done this. Other people are using it right now. But if you can see, there we go. Just about. So I have cut a slot. Uh, I've just, I've just cut the the paper between the edge of the hole and the edge of the paper so that it can easily be it can e easily with thumb and finger you can reattach the paper to the ring binder without opening the rings now how did i conduct this experiment and the experiment the, the purpose of the experiment was to find out whether over a certain period of time this paper gets too worn or dog-eared so that it becomes uh, a, a convoluted process. Uh, the paper uh, falls out unexpectedly or, or just doesn't turn properly. So what did I do? So I, I effectively accelerated. It's a bit like um, when, uh, when they uh, road test a car. They put 
10 years in research and development, they might put 10 years, maybe 100,000 miles on a new engine uh, to test the design in a very short space of time. Maybe just a few, get, they do 10 years wear in just a few months. And I've tried to replicate this here because what I have done is I have opened and removed and reinserted and, and repositioned the paper in different positions. Um, I spent maybe half an hour a day just moving things around while I've been listening to a podcast or something like that. So I'm not, I'm not wasting my time by just doing doing just this one task. I've been, I've had my headphones on and I've been enjoying uh, typically the radio or podcasts while I've been doing this. So I spent half a day every day for a month, and then this is the result. And I'm pleased to, I'm pleased to. Uh, to uh, inform you that more or less uh, I think there was one page that I accidentally tore and I just discarded it so there are actually 99 pages left and I have found if I just turn these uh, normally this would be on the table wouldn't it horizontally but as you can see and this this is just uh, a standard standard uh, hole punch for for a final effect, so nothing special, uh, and a pair of scissors. Um, it's it's actually worked very very well. Now, I would not do this. I would I would not uh, recommend this if you uh, are planning on storing the contents in an archive. Um, like a journal or or a, a reference guide, because sooner or later, inevitably, this these uh, holes will become the slits will become ripped and the paper will fall out. Yes, I get it. I absolutely get it. But as a diary, as a diary, this is going to work very very well. Especially, especially. I mean, I haven't lost any pages, but if I did. Um, as you know from a previous video, I use a combined analog digital system. So I will have a diary, not not this particular one, but uh, for the purposes of experimentation, I, I I just wanted to show you blank pages in sixty gram per square meter paper. So the most vulnerable, the most flimsy paper, more or less possible. Uh, but it but it it would work for any file effects process where the paper is not going to last forever. So we're looking at a to-do list, we're looking at a diary, so long as your diary is, is not something that you want to keep forever and ever and ever. But I suppose you could if you're not using it very often and you, you, you bind it uh, in, a, in an old binder and put it on the shelf and you only refer to it very, very occasionally. Yes, it would probably work, but this isn't, uh, this isn't a, a long-term strategy. But for short-term use, mainly to-do lists and, uh, and a diary, um, or projects, for instance, possibly, uh, this, in my opinion, is is a, a viable option. Now, what made me uh, what made me think about this? Because it's not it's not the f I'm not the first person to to do this, obviously. Um, but let me, let me tell you, something uh, something happens. Okay, so I was on a um, just over a month ago. I was on a on a train journey, cross country. Um, I like trains. In fact, I like trains better than uh, than driving, to be honest. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> um, and I, I, I had a, I had a file fax, and I uh, let me, let me, uh, let me give you an example of the sound. It's not very good. It can't really replicate the sound on a. I'm shooting uh, this on an iPhone and. The uh, the iPhone has uh, for, for a short sharp sound. It, it tends to very quickly suppress and change sounds that that spike. So this isn't going to sound as loud on an iPhone as it did on the train. But that is loud, and I'll tell you what that is loud enough to make 
the ears prick up of half a coach of people. And that's fine if you're doing it once. That's fine. No problem. But if you're constantly doing this, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do it anymore because it's probably going to annoy you as well. But if you're constantly doing that because you are, uh, and it doesn't have to be a train, does it? It could be uh, a train or a cafe or a library. And, and let me tell you, this is my library face. It's even worse than the train face. And I'm going... And that is the face of someone that's trying to suppress the sounds of the rings opening and snapping shut of a Firefax or another binder because it's, um, it's annoying. It could potentially be annoying for someone if you are going through a repeated number of open and shuts because you're trying to rearrange things in your file of facts in the manner that we have all become accustomed. So, is there any sounds if I'm on the train or the library or the cafe doing this? Not really. Not really. If it wasn't in view, if it wasn't in view, you wouldn't know what I'm doing here. So I'm moving one around... And it's just a little bit of a rustle there. But on a train, no one's going to hear that. And so from a perspective of sound, uh, sound pollution, if you like, um, this is a brilliant way of using a Filofax or other similar binder to minimise the sound pollution that you cause to others and and that's what it's all about and apart from anything it's actually it's actually faster it's i haven't timed it but i would say it's generally generally faster to remove several pages several sheets of paper using the 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 the, the split hole method as i call it the split hole method Maybe, maybe that's not right, but I'll go with that. Split hole method. Um, because, uh, uh, it, I mean, it, 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 is, it is possibly faster. It's possibly acceptable. It's certainly, from my experimentation over the last month, uh, doable, achievable, sustainable um, for tasks where the, where the paper is fairly temporary and transient, like a to-do list or... A diary. Um, what are the disadvantages? Well, obviously, obviously, it's not quite as secure. However, um, this is what I recommend: uh, a piece of elastic, because that way, if paper does slip down, and to be honest, it, I don't think it's going to slip down because the paper is it could it could slide out that way. But if you have got your fastener this way, typically you'd have a fastener, wouldn't you, on a on a Filofax, and then you had a um, uh, an elastic band similar to a uh, that that you'd find on a uh, a moleskin or a Rhodia notebook. Uh, that's pretty secure, and I uh, I do use uh, notebooks, typically Rhodia, but a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, Moleskin, so I tend to use the Rhodia because the, the Clairefontaine paper is just so, so good for fountain pen. And when I'm uh, when I'm travelling, I, I like to use a fountain pen. Um, I find it more therapeutic, but let me let me not go down the fountain pen route because I have fountain pens are a whole new ball game, as far as I'm concerned. Um but that's good enough, I think. Um I uh, I I am tempted, I am tempted to do this, you know, uh, you know, possibly for for my diary, um, certainly for my to do list. Um, I do chop and change. I, I'm I'm I I love 
experimenting with paper-based productivity and the way paper is stored, handled, manipulated, produced even. Um, so, uh, so I chop and change all the time. Uh, but if I only had one system, one idea, then then frankly, uh, it, I you know uh, people would quickly get bored with what I'm doing because I am I am genuinely interested in trying different things. So so I'm waffling now, but um, I think it's something that uh, people should try. And uh, and and uh, let me know in the comments how you get on. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a, 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 a terrible idea? Um, there is one other advantage with this system. Um, and before I go, let me let me explain. Uh, how are we? Fifteen minutes. Okay, so that's that's long enough. But before I go, as we know. And I'm not saying this is specific a specific problem to Filofax because it could potentially be a problem with any ring binder whatsoever. And that is, uh, rings sometimes don't shut precisely and rings do not uh, align with each other uh, all the time. And so uh, this, is, this is a perennial problem associated with binders, ring binders in general. I just have this hunch that one of the one of the problems with that causes misalignment is the the repeated opening and shutting of the of the um of the rings themselves and it just occurred to me that I could I could solder them shut permanently shut Get a bit of emery cloth. You'll have to Google emery cloth if you don't know what emery cloth is, and just just t um, uh, make the joins very very super smooth. And so, even if the you sit on or tread on your binder, even if it's packed in a backpack or or you have uh, you have maybe uh, a. F um, a perennial problem with uh, with with the rings not being as good as you hoped they might be. If you use this system, and you carefully salt clean and solder these rings shut, that would solve arguably the biggest problem with ring binders. It would completely solve it. That's food for thought. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.